I'm Corey Jansen, co-founder and co-CEO of AltML. I'm going to ask you for a two, three minute introduction to the biggest forces that are shaping the future of work and skills development in Canada today. I think you can see just by looking around how technology is transforming every industry. And uh, I think what why that's important is it means that Canada needs to change from this resource-based economy in the past to one that actually adds value and is digital first and focused on the intangible economy. Second, I actually think that ESG needs to be at the core of everything we do. And there is a, a you know a, obviously a growing uh, a number of uh, institutional asset managers, so the, the the big funds with the big money that are focused on this. Um, but we have so many great things within this country. But frankly, I don't think we fully tell the story when it comes to ESG. How will these forces require stakeholders in uh, our Canadian economy, governments, employers, schools, but also the employees and the future uh, professionals themselves to adapt? I think there there's so many areas you could go with this, um, but I think the most important area is just around culture and our mindset towards how we interact with one another. Um, now, l let me maybe bring up what I think is actually the biggest area where we could change and we're at the intersection of academia, government and the private sector. And that's on work experience learning. I, I actually think that the number one thing we could do would be to have a tighter uh, 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 system of communication so that we're actually putting people to work and understanding what the needs are in terms of a startup, in terms of a large corporation, um, and so that that interaction is happening and those collisions are happening more frequently. I actually think that we've got the exact model right in our backyard. Um, you know, when you look at Waterloo and what they've done, there's a reason why Waterloo grads are sought after um, in the valley. Uh, you know, you see these resumes and I say, you know, from from uh, an entrepreneur who's making those hiring decisions, the, the resumes from Waterloo are unbelievable because even in an undergrad, a four year degree, you see all these amazing experiences, sometimes from multinational, sometimes from a startup, sometimes from a local Canadian company. What if as a country we said, let's make every university be like Waterloo? What if we actually got together support from government, support from from the corporates, support from nonprofits, startups, and we all got together and said, how do we actually have a more cohesive strategy um, and collaboration in terms of actually bringing in work experience as part of our educational system? How will machine learning really impact uh, how Canadians work in the future? What are some of the opportunities and some of the threats that uh, come with uh, this relatively new technology? Machine learning is going to be the most disruptive technology in our generation. I believe it will affect uh, the way we work in the same way that the internet affected communication. And we're just at the er in the early innings of, of the change that's going to happen. I think the biggest misconception that people have is they see the Hollywood version of, of artificial intelligence and machine learning. They see that you know, kind of dystopian, you know, robotic, what what a data scientist would call AGI, you know, general intelligence. Um, the vast majority of ML projects today, frankly, are very, very narrow, and they're about improving specific business processes. And the majority of the time, the project we're working on, they still have a human component. We're really building tools to help professionals make better decisions or otherwise get rid of the grunt work in their job that they actually don't like to do anyway. And so once we understand, and we see this with some of our partners, once you actually get through and you realize, okay, wait, this isn't so scary, all of a sudden it gets together the data scientists with those subject matter experts. And, and, and then the discussion goes to how do we build the next generation of tools? And that's where it gets excited when it terms of the opportunity for Canada within ML. Machine learning is the ultimate in transformation because it's a horizontal enabler that can affect any business that has a significant amount of data. And essentially, all businesses have a significant amount of data. Governments have a significant amount of data. So what that means is that you see the results in the big tech firms from the Valley currently when it comes to ML. Uh, but what we think will change over the coming years is every industry, whether that's agriculture, whether that's energy, um, the most traditional industries in the world all generate significant amounts of data. So when you think of AIML as that horizontal enabler and not an industry specific category unto itself, 
all of a sudden you realize that the opportunities for change are, are practically endless. The largest opportunity for Canadians and for Canadian entrepreneurs is at the intersection of AI and health. You know, we've got some unique situations where because of the single payer system, um, at least on paper, uh, all the data resides in, you know, one sys- you know, one system and you should be able to be able to get access to that. I guess I say should because it's not so easy in, 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 in real life. But we've got a very diverse multicultural population um, and these data sets that that because of the nature of our system and that it's not so fragmented like you see south of the border, we should be a world leader in solutions for AI and health. I think we will be. Um, There's some red tape and some regulatory issues. It makes it very difficult to get access to that data. And I think that comes back to that ESG question. We also need to make sure we have the dialogue with society to understand that we're not trying to uh, violate anybody's privacy, but rather if you're looking at aggregate anonymized data in an ethical way, that can help actually have better treatment pathways, you know, improve the life of the patient, while at the same time saving the taxpayers the dollars that, that it costs for our health system. So we, you genuinely can have your cake and eat it too, um, but we need to get beyond that fear and have that conversation to understand what does it mean to have ethical AI in health? And that's where Canada could be a real world leader. In general, what are the set of skills that you think Canada um, must focus on to develop um, uh, within our our future workforce for us to be competitive? Probably the biggest area that the most important thing is that, you know, the, the, the ability to learn how to learn, the ability to, you know, be adaptive. Um, If we look at, uh, yeah, and and this is not to take away from from coding at a young age. I'm certainly a proponent of that. Uh, but when we see our teams together, the most successful ones combine that domain expertise, that subject matter expertise, with the expertise in data science. Um, and, and even then, I'm simplifying a bit. You know, the the ideal project has a business analyst, a project manager, maybe that business development person who help, helps get access to the contra- contractually to the data. And then you've got the data wranglers, the core data scientists and the ML modelers, as well as the, the software engineers that work in combination. So you've got all these different skill sets, but they need to meet in the middle. And so that ability to actually see a, you know, with a diverse team, um, that different point of view and the, the communication piece to translate back and forth, um, that is absolutely critical. Uh, and 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 I know I've just rattled off a whole bunch of different areas there, which these will probably change in the next five to 10 years as the technology matures. So if we can build a resilient um, uh, youth that understands um, uh, adaptation and, and maybe that micro micro credentialing idea is a big piece of that. You know, this whole idea of you go in and you get a degree and you're done and check this off does not uh, mesh with the real world that we see. Uh, the you know those who come in that want to continue to learn that want to continue to build their skills that is as important as anything that you did back in college or university. I have to ask you this uh, sort of uh, tangent question. So you co-founded Investopedia in 1999. So you're actually one of the pioneers. You're there with the Jeff Bezos of these of this world who in you know pre 2000 bubble and and recovery uh, already had a vision. Is it really different today? than it was at the time in terms of this, this need for, for, for skills? I don't think it ever changes. I think there's these core fundamentals. I, so much as it's um, the amount of opportunity today is far greater than it was back then even. So, so back then, if you wanted to start a company, the amount of capital you needed and the technical skills to, to put, the, put that into place was, was pretty significant. And, and, and you saw the number of companies that raised a ton of money and then had these flame outs. Well, now, if you've got a, a couple people with a good idea with what you see in terms of cloud technology that's out there today, and frankly, I mean, anybody starting a company can get credits from whether it's Azure, AWS, or, or GCP, the Google platform, you know, you can be up and running with a good idea. You can put out a prototype in a very short period of time at almost no cost. So it's actually made the world more accessible. So you've got this double-edged sword right now where in some ways you're competing against more people from around the world, um, but in other ways, our market is not limited just to Canada. Um, you know, one of the best things we did in my previous business, Investopedia, is we didn't focus on the Canadian market. And, and that isn't to be unpatriotic or anything, but there's this market south of us that's 10 times as big as us. So would you rather be 
you know, a pretty decent player down there or the top player here in a market that is 10% of the size. Um, just take that analogy and multiply it across, include Asia, include Europe. The opportunity for entrepreneurs right now is phenomenal. Um, but you're also competing with that kid in Beijing or Berlin. How do those stakeholders need to work and collaborate to one, identify the skills, but then also make them happen? I think there's going to be a reinvention of the edu post-secondary education system. Um, you know, post-COVID, uh, you know, do we need the same number of colleges across the country? Uh, you know, does you know does every uh, college in in Alberta or Ontario or Quebec need to offer also offer you know a business diploma as part of their offerings? Right? How will online change this? And so I think that that there. There needs to be a, a, a rethinking and almost of going, hey, we've, we've got this system right now. If we built it from day one, uh, would we have done it in the same fashion? And again, these are, are complicated questions that probably even me bringing up the question would tick off a lot of the people that are in there because it affects a lot of people. And, but, but as a country, I think we need to do that. So let me, you know, park that big picture idea for a side and says, you know, the two real tangible ideas I think are, I, I already alluded to this idea on work experience learning. You know, if every university, if, if Canadian universities were thought of in the same way that Waterloo has in terms of, hey, if you can get that, that uh, grad from the U of A or the U of T or UBC, and you know that they've been through this program where they've actually combined those work experience and, and we, we, we marshal society to be able to put that together. And I think that means startups, large organizations, as well as government figuring out what that looks like. Um, I think that would be, would change the face of the country. Um, but there's one other area that I think could uh, uh, be actually an easy change that if we just, you know, got our act together and that's around procurement. And, and this is both from the government side and the side from, from, from the largest companies in, in the country. Uh, you, you know, sometimes we deride other politicians for talking about Buy America or that piece of it. But the fact of the matter is around the world, you know, others try to take care of their own first. And this is not to say that we should ever, uh, you know, go with the, the solutions that, that aren't the right fit, and especially in the government environment, obviously that makes sense. But, you know, when you look at the healthcare system, for example, why don't we create these sandboxes where researchers and entrepreneurs can actually commercialize their products in Canada first? I hear this story over and over again, whether it's in health, whether it's in oil and gas, it really doesn't matter. Uh, it's a very right now that Canada is a very tough place to find your first customer or to launch product or to commercialize IP. Uh, and I think we need a strategy built around that and really focusing on internally because that's how we're going to launch the next you know, the next RIM, uh, you know, the next Shopify, um, this could play a huge role. And it's what other countries have been doing around the world for decades. But we need to maybe park a little bit of our Canadian politeness aside for a bit and just say, OK, let, let's focus on building here first um, while maintaining our trade agreements and the things that you need to do. There's always complexity to this. But like if there's a focus around procurement and Canadian first, I think that would unleash a ton of innovation. If you had this 30 seconds uh, sort of opportunity to pitch either a person or even a group. So let's say the prime ministers, the obvious one, industry leaders, academic leaders, youth. Um, and, and the pitch was about how to improve the competitiveness of Canada's workforce. I think you got to go right to the top. I mean, if you want to make change, right? Prime Minister, uh, many Canadians don't know that we are world leaders in terms of academic research for artificial intelligence and machine learning. We punch way above our weight class thanks to investments made by governments across the country over the last 20 years. And we're also for the first time really getting that uh, the tech ecosystem getting world respect on the world stage, especially in Toronto, Montreal and Vancouver. I would encourage you to set a bold vision to make Canada the best place in the world to work in AI. From the largest corporations to government, but especially startups, put in place the policies that allow us to train the next generation of Canadians, but make this the place where startups will be created. Let's build a strategy around data, the pipeline for talent from our universities and the policies to commercialize so we can make sure that we keep wealth and jobs here in Canada.